Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the poker today, I have a very exciting announcement. In case you haven't heard, the WPT is headed to the Win Las Vegas in December. It's going to feature a $10,000 main event with the biggest prize pool ever guaranteed at $15 million. So if you would like your shot at that tournament, I have a very exciting Twitter contest going on between this vlog and next week's vlog. So head on over to my Twitter, you can follow me there. The winner of that contest will receive a package totaling $12,000. It's going to cover your $10,000 buy-in to that WPT, and it's gonna cover $2,000 worth of your travel expenses and get you into a nice hotel while you're here. To enter the contest, is very simple. Follow me and WPT Global on Twitter, retweet my original contest tweet, and to participate in the contest itself, send me a video that is less than five seconds long, that is as creative as you can get, featuring one thing WPT related. It could be the app, it could be WPT Global, it could be a trophy if you've won a WPT trophy in the past. Just get creative, have fun with it. The one who strikes a chord with me the most will be the winner of a 12K package. So good luck to you guys in the contest. And now let's jump into the poker. We're headed back to LA, our third and final vlog over in Los Angeles, over at Hustler Casino. I hope you guys enjoy. For the second meetup game, we are upping the stakes to a 2-5, $5 big blind ante game. We got Jesse at the other table who is doing his best once again to vlog some hands for you guys. We'll be hearing from him a little bit later. I'm buying in for 1K and we're gonna kick things off with a fun hand. Jumping right into things, we are four ways right now to a 10-8-5 two diamond flop. The pre-flop raiser does not see bet. He checks it over to me. Although I do have top pair with four people in the pot and a nine kicker, this is a pretty clear cut medium strength hand that I would like to pot control. And I'm gonna start off with a check. Cut off, who is a guy who watches my live streams and that I've gotten to know a little bit in this game so far, bets $25. Button folds, under the gun, now calls. And for the same reasons that I checked, I'm going to just call this flop bet. The turn is the 10 of clubs and pretty quickly, the under the gun player now leads into the two of us with a $70 bet. That's about half pot. This looks really strong, but I have trips. <laughs> so because this guy didn't see bet the flop after raising pre-flop, I took away a lot of different flush draws, combo draws, over pairs, and sets that he would have definitely wanted to bet on this flop in a four-way pot. So that leaves my opponent with a lot of 10X holdings in his hand, which all have better kickers than my nine. But just in case my assessment is completely wrong and he is check calling flop with flush draws and then leading them on this turn, I can't fold my trips just yet. The cutoff also calls. The river is a three of diamonds. That completes the front door flush draw, which the cutoff player could definitely have. And now the under the gun player goes all in for $139. Even though he gets called in two spots, he doesn't slow down. It doesn't scare him off. He just goes all in. He was short stacking. So this is for a really tiny amount compared to the size of the pot. I just don't know how many bluffs he has, especially with the diamonds getting there. I have to worry about cutoff behind me. I think the best decision at this point is to just fold this river, even though I have trips. But in the moment, I did not follow through with that decision. I end up calling. I was just, I talked myself into getting too good of a price. And just in case he was bluffing, even though probably not happening, just in case he was bluffing, I flicked in the call and then cut off just jams all in over the top of that. So this is an absolute disaster. He goes all in for $410. Now I know this is a simple fold. I'm absolutely crushed in this spot. So dead. When the hands are revealed, cut off has a full house. He flopped a set of eights, turned a boat, and under the gun had jack 10 of hearts for an even better trips hand. So I was in third place, believe it or not. Even with trips, I was in dead last in this hand. Wish I could have saved 140 bucks, but you know, it's a meetup game. I'm splashing. Oh man, I'm third place. I almost folded too and I was like, man. Yesterday, everyone was trying to bluff me all day. The one, and I folded, folded, folded. Today, I called wrong. Nice hand, nice spot. Full face bump. 
highest one. Add another hundred. Okay, I've got the straddle on in this one. We're upping the stakes to a 2-5-10 game with a five big blind ante. And when it folds around to the button, he makes it $50 to go. A couple of notes on this player. He does not want to play the seven deuce game. He doesn't want to play bomb pots or the stand up game. Anything that's sort of gambly and mixing things up, he does not want to get involved in. He's kind of been short stacking the game and not playing very many hands. So that's who we're up against. After both blinds fold, I look down at ace king offsuit from the straddle. So I asked the opponent on the button. All right, what are we working with? How much do you have total? And once he moves his hand around, I see that his stack is slightly less than $200. Makes my decision very easy, I say. All right, all of it. He snap calls and we're up against pocket aces. <laughs> what else would it be? The table is rooting for me in this one. It was pretty funny. They're all rooting for a suck out, but it doesn't come. He holds with aces and doubles up. Nice hand. So things are not going well so far, but all of that could change in this hand because when Lojack, who is the same guy from the Aces hand, opens to $55 in the Lojack, I'm on the button with Pocket Kings. All right, revenge. It's time for revenge. I check out his stack. Again, he only has 300 something dollars. So that's only like 30 blind with this straddle on. So I three bet trying to ISO his stack. I make it $110 to go. It's just a min click because of his stack size. When it folds to him, he snap goes all in obviously i quickly call uh, same 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 person <laughs> oh, oh, and what do you know aces again <laughs> Back to back versus the same guy. Maybe this is a mental game leak of mine, but it always feels extra painful to get coolered by the guy who's not playing any hands and not giving any action. It always just feels like the poker gods are against you that day. And no, we don't get there. His aces hold once again, and all of a sudden I'm down $700 in this freaking 2-5 game. Still trending in the wrong direction. I'm gonna get up, move tables, and try to shake up this energy and turn this session around. Well, here's to hoping I can run a little better than that. We start off hot right away picking up pocket kings in one of the first few hands, which is always nice. There's a limper. I raise pretty substantially over the limper and the small blind calls and the limper comes along. So we're going three ways to the flop. The flop comes queen jack deuce with a flush draw and it checks to me. I decide to bet big here. I go 50 into 85. I really like betting big with this particular hand because I think I almost always have the best hand here. I kind of feel like we want to get a lot of value in now before a bad card comes off and we have to slow down. I also want to charge the draws that they can have. So now the small blind goes all in for 400 and the other player folds. We have a super, super easy call here. I think that there's almost no hands that he beats us with. I think he would have re-raised preflop with queens or jacks. So that really just leaves pocket twos. Maybe he has queen jack sometimes, but we beat every queen. We beat every jack. We beat a flush draw. So I'm very happy putting the money in. The board runs out a 9 and a 5 without a spade, so I'm feeling pretty good at this point. He actually tells me that he had a queen, so my hand was good the entire time. And we take down a really big pot early on, which feels great. Must be nice to win with kings. Okay, in this hand I pick up pocket queens and open from early position. The cutoff calls, and then the big blind re-raises to $55. This feels like a very small raise, and I haven't seen him re-raise at all yet. He's been pretty aggressive, but I haven't seen him 3-bet, so I really don't know what to make of this size or how strong it is or how weak it is. I decide to just call. I feel like in general, people's squeezes are quite strong and I'm not really interested in getting in pocket queens pre. If I four bet, he might fold something like tens or make a big hero fold with pocket jacks. Uh, he probably folds ace queen sometimes. So I end up just getting it in against ace king or pairs that are better than me a lot. And that's a pretty big disaster. Meanwhile, if I call, I keep in all the hands that I'm beating and I'm in position so I can navigate the hand pretty well. The cutoff folds and we see a flop of ace seven seven with two clubs. Uh, not the flop that I really wanted to see. He thinks for a few seconds and then he bets $40. I think this is a very normal, reasonable bet on this type of board. And I'm not really looking to do anything but call here. I think we can still have the best hand, but uh, raising doesn't really accomplish anything at all. You know, if he is bluffing, we want to let him continue to bluff. The turn is the six, bringing a second flush draw, and now he slows down and checks. I think it's a really easy check on the turn for me. The river's the five of clubs bringing in the flush draw, and he checks again. I felt really torn here. So the theory player in me wants to check here, but then there's another side of me. 
The side that's the raw, instinctual poker player that just feels like he has jacks or tens here. I don't know if it's something about the sizing he used on the flop or this timing in the hand when he checked or what it is, but I just feel really strongly like he has jacks or tens and I really want to try to squeeze out value. Eventually, I just decide I don't have enough good reason to bet and I make a really sad check back. He ends up tabling pocket jacks and I just can't help but feel terrible for not going with my instincts. That said, I'm still very happy to take down a nice pot and be up a bunch on the day. All right, the new table has a very fun energy. People are playing the seven deuce game. They're chatty. We're talking during hand, so I'm excited to gamble with them. In this one, I open ace jack offsuit under the gun. It's a straddled pot, so I make it $30 to go. Under the gun one, the big blind, and the straddle all come along. So four ways with 120 bucks in the pot, we see the nine, seven, seven, two club flop. Checks to me, and mentally I have checked out of this hand, so I check as well. Under the gun one also checks. I said I was done with the hand, but then the dealer puts out the deuce of clubs on the turn. And with the ace of clubs in my hand, I see a little bit of potential in this hand now. Big blind checks and the straddle leads out for only $35. I think this looks pretty weak, this sizing. It's very small. And with the ace of clubs, I know that he doesn't have the nut flush. And with the seven deuce game on and nobody three betting pre, I'm most likely to have the seven deuce. So I'm trying to just go for it here with a raise and get him off of some sort of weak pair, something like that. So I raise it up to $115. The other two fold and the straddle starts mulling it over. He wonders out loud what I could have here. I don't know what you could have here. Over pair, but eventually he does lay it down. Okay, actually. <laughs> you can pick one. <laughs> Pick the wrong one. Pick the wrong one. <laughs> Pick the wrong one. <laughs> I was thinking you were so deuce. <laughs> and bluffing is fun. Let's try that again. So in this one, cutoff opens to $20. I'm in the small blind with nine eight of hearts, not going anywhere with this suited connector. I make the call. And we both see the seven three deuce, two club and one heart flop. I check it over to him. He does throw out $25 into a $45 pot, but I just think people are gonna be c-betting this 100% of the time. I've got that pretty heart on the board. So I've got backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. I've got all kinds of turn cards that I can just keep barreling if I check raise this flop. So that's what I do. I make it $80 to go. And he says, I want you to at least see one. Just pick the right one this time. Eventually he lays it down and again, I let him pick one card and lucky for him, he picks. <laughs> so he'll never know if I had it or not, unless he watches this vlog. So I am on a roll with these bluffs. Let's see if we can make it three in a row. We're many hours into this meetup game at this point and the game is getting juicy. There's one guy literally playing 100% of hands. This is not an exaggeration. And this is the guy who's under the gun and calls for $5. Under the gun two makes it $25 to go. Button calls and I look down at seven deuce offsuit from the big blind. Yes, we have the seven deuce game on. There's a bounty for winning with this hand. So I'm gonna three bet. I squeeze to $125. Only person out of this pre-flop lineup that I'm worried about is under the gun two. The other two are super loose. They didn't really show any aggression, so not worried about them. So then something interesting happens. Under the gun folds, under the gun two, the one I was worried about now folds, and the button is the one to stick around. He makes the call for a hundred bucks more. The flop comes out King five, four, two hearts and a spade. Not much going for me, but we really have to try to win this pot. So I stick out a C bet of $140, which is half pot. He quickly lays it down and I flip over my hand proudly and collect $10 from every single player at this table. Hey, everybody. $10. Oh, that's there. That's, that's there because I knew you had that. I knew $10, you had $10, $10, $10. Ew. I give 10 of it to the dealer. All my bluffs are working out. It's a complete 180 for my last table and things are looking up. In one of the last hands of the day, I opened king five of diamonds from under the gun. I know this is pretty out of line, but I'm up a bunch on the session. I'm really feeling myself and I'm just kind of happy to put myself in some tricky situations post-flop and navigate my way out of them. The hijack and the cutoff both call and we see a flop of ace of spades, 10 of spades, five of hearts. 
I think this is a really nice hand to start bluffing and firing multiple barrels with. Having the five means that it's really hard for our opponents to have pocket fives, which is one of the strongest hands they're going to have in this situation. I expect them to very rarely have aces, and I think if they have tens, they would re-raise before the flop a lot. So I'm really worried about ace, ten, ace, five, and five. So having a five in our hand is actually a very important card. So I start off with a bet, and I don't feel like I need to start by betting that large on the flop, so I just make it 20 into 58 here. Both players call and we see a two of clubs turn. I definitely want to keep bluffing and I decide to bet really big because I don't really expect either player to have more than one pair after their quick calls on the flop. Also, the hijack has been quite sticky, so I want to give him as much encouragement as I possibly can to fold. So this entire weekend I've been really struggling with my first attempt at vlogging. I've been missing hands, I've been missing the board, I've been missing the action. Pretty much if you name it, I've missed it while filming. So while I'm cutting out my bet, Ashley basically comes over, grabs my phone, and actually films the hand for me. So big thanks to her, otherwise I don't even think this hand would be in the vlog. The hijack takes a long time and finally begrudgingly folds, and the cutoff folds shortly after him. So it turns out we may have picked a really good size there, and we end up taking down a nice pot. Heading back over to the original table, we finally get a stand-up game going to end the night. Quick reminder about the rules. If you win a pot, you can sit down. If you're the last person standing, you owe everyone $10 at the table, or you can do one squat to equal $1 off of your debt. All right, we're eligible to win the very first stand-up pot. Let's do it. And I was so excited to finally play this game. I proceed to dust off hundreds of dollars just trying to get my seat get my opportunity to sit down and not be the last one standing. I try a light three bet on the button with six four suited and the straddle immediately cold four bets me. I open some trash, get three bet, have to fold. It becomes so much less about the money and so much more about the time. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't agree more. Now I'm opening this hand from the small blind, get three bet again, have to lay it down. And here I go tossing more money in there with absolute air until I finally realized that I hate this game. Patience <laughs> club. Wait, did you really have aces? Oh my god. This guy stood up for the entire he sat out for the entire stand-up game. Oh my god. That's right, this guy was either in the bathroom or wandering the casino for most of our stand-up game. When he finally comes back to play a hand, he just gets aces and beats me heads up to be the last person standing. So after all of those bad hands trying to win this game, I still owe some squats. And that's how we finish the second meetup game. We're into this game for $1,700 out of this game for 980 for a total loss of $720 down the drain for this 2-5 meetup game. Final tally for me, in for 1,000, out for 2060, for a grand profit of $1,060 and a great time. Thank you so much to Sean and the team at Hustler for supporting vloggers and special thanks to all of you guys who made it out to play for the weekend. I really appreciated your energy. It was so much fun. Can't wait to do it again. And how about you, Jess? Did you have fun? Yeah, I met a lot of super interesting people with great stories and I'm quite confident my filming skills can only get better. So I hope that these three vlogs in LA were fun for you guys to watch. I can't wait to bring you some more. Next on the vlog, get to know Jesse a little bit better when he wins the most money he's ever won in one session and it was all caught on a live stream.